Catherine. Can I talk to you for a minute? Sure, what's wrong? Actually, I'm still wondering whether I should tell you about this. I'm curious. Please don't hesitate to tell me. If there's anything I can do, I will help you. It's not like that. It's about my son. About Walter? What's wrong with my husband? Actually, my son is having an affair. I'm worried. What? Affair? Is that really true? Yes, but I didn't want to hurt your feelings. I've been thinking over and over again whether or not to tell you. I couldn't sleep at night thinking about it. I can't believe that my husband would cheat on me. I can't either, but it's true. With whom? And how could you know something that I don't know? I just happened to see it. Last week, my son went on a business trip. Do you remember? Of course, I remember. He was supposed to be on a business trip, but I saw him in town. How is that possible? He was holding hands with a woman. This is clearly cheating, isn't it? Well, yes. I'd like to know more details. Do you know the date and time? What? I'd like to conduct an investigation, so please tell me the date and time. I need some proof of the affair. I don't remember that. What did you say? What I want to hear more than that is about the future. He cheated on you less than a year after you got married. What are you going to do? You need to think about how this happened. I'm sorry to tell you, but if the affair is true, I'm divorcing Walter. I can't just live as if nothing happened. It's too much to bear. You're divorcing my son? Just because of one affair? Are you telling me that you're not going to forgive Walter? I can't stay married to a man who cheated behind my back. It's just disgusting. How dare you describe my son as disgusting? It's your responsibility that Walter is having an affair. He cheats on you in the first year of your marriage because he has a problem with you. Shouldn't you be sorry about that and fix it? But you're putting all the fault on my son? That's not fair. No matter what you say, if it's true, I'm divorcing Walter. We still don't know if he really was having an affair. So in the meantime, I'd like to get proof of the affair. Can you please keep this as a secret to my husband? Huh? Why should I help you? I just want to make sure that you saw the right person. Was it really my husband and a woman I don't know together? I have to find out for sure. There is no way I could be mistaken. He is my own son. What kind of mother would mistake her own son's face? Well then, are you really sure that the man you saw holding hands with a woman you don't know was Walter? Of course. Looks like my son has found someone better than you. I'm sure he did. If there is no mistake about that, it means that Walter was really having an affair. Are you saying that you are okay with my husband and I getting a divorce? Yes, I don't mind. You were the one who said that you want to get a divorce, weren't you? If that's what you want, I will accept your decision. So why don't you do whatever you want? I don't want my son to stay married to such a heartless wife. I see. Duly understood. Please explain to me, Bruna. You told me there was no way you could have mistaken my husband for another man, didn't you? What are you talking about all of a sudden? My husband wasn't having an affair. Oh, really? That's great, then. What? You were the one who told me that you saw him having an affair, right? You said that Walter was holding hands with another woman. Don't you feel sorry for your own son who was falsely accused? What do you mean by affair? Did I say that? Of course you did. Then how did you know Walter wasn't having an affair? Did you hire a detective to find out? I asked his company about the business trip. Then, 
I found out that he was meeting with a business partner while he was on a business trip. They said it was impossible for him to have been here at that time. Then maybe he cheated with her after that. Cheating is something you do after work. You wouldn't go out late at night, would you? Besides, I picked Walter up from the station that day, so it's absolutely impossible that he was meeting someone else at night. Then maybe it wasn't the day of his business trip. I'm sorry, maybe I got the date wrong. It is quite a while ago, so my memory is a little fuzzy. I see. Anyway, I even sneaked a look at my husband's cell phone, but there was nothing suspicious. You looked through my son's cell phone without his permission? That's horrible! I know that he's your husband, but that's an invasion of privacy. Yes, I feel bad for that, but I had no choice because I had to get the proof of his affair. I can't believe that you would go that far. It's a violation of my son's human rights. In the first place, wasn't it you who told me that my husband was having an affair? You have no right to accuse me for violating Walter's human rights. And, as a last resort, I also asked my husband directly. He said with a straight face that he was definitely not having an affair. I decided to believe him. Then what? So you're not divorcing him? Yes, I'm not divorcing him. I never wanted a divorce. I'm just saying that you were wrong this time. Well, but just in case you remember the date and time, please contact me anytime. There's no way I'd remember something like that. What? Because it's a lie. You're such an idiot. A lie? You lied when you said that my husband was cheating on me? Yes, I did. Why did you do that? Isn't that disrespectful to my husband? I did that because I wanted to test your ability to cope with troubles. Testing me? There's no need for that. What on earth are you testing me for? Of course I need to test you. Like the way you think about cheating or the love you have for my son? Well, it was just as I thought. I know you don't like the fact that I said I was thinking to divorce Walter, but that's because you told me he was cheating on me. And since my husband is innocent, I don't want a divorce. In fact, he wasn't cheating on me. Regardless of the affair, you don't trust Walter, do you? You're sniffing around for evidence of an affair. You even said you were divorcing him. You also called him disgusting. You really are a lousy wife. That's because you lied to me. Please reflect on that a little. You know, this is a trial to train my son's wife. If you're saying you're divorcing him over something like this, I can't help but feeling sorry for my son. I don't want him to be with such a lousy wife like you. You must divorce my son. That's enough. I can't talk about it anymore. Please excuse me. What do you think you're doing? I'm not done talking yet. Bruna, will you just quit troubling me? Can you please explain why you did that? Do what? I don't understand what you're saying. The last time you came to my house, you tore my clothes. What was your purpose of doing that? Oh my God, that's a scary thing to say. Don't make false accusations. What a horrible wife. But the clothes that were torn were the ones you complained about being too flashy before. Isn't that strange? How could a stranger tear them all with such pinpoint accuracy? I have no doubt that you are the only one who could have done it. Those flashy clothes look as if you were trying to seduce a man. Most of your clothes are just too disgusting. I know that most of my skirts are just a little too short, but they are just casual clothes. Most of my friends wear the same kind of clothes. Why are you complaining about that? I don't think so. Anyway, you don't have to dress up anymore. You are a married woman. I dress up for myself, 
It's not because I want to be popular with men. Besides, I think my husband would be happier with me dressing up. You can say whatever you want. By the way, don't tell me that you are the one who's having an affair. I'm not having an affair. I doubt it. Anyway, please don't ever touch anything in my closet ever again. It's an invasion of privacy, you know? Catherine, are you aware of your position? You have entered my family by marrying my son, so you have to obey me. And what belongs to you also belongs to me, who is your mother-in-law. Do you understand? That's complete nonsense. You are a wicked wife who doesn't respect her mother-in-law. I wonder why my son married such a failure. You haven't given birth to. Are you defective? I feel sorry for my son who got married to such a useless wife. That's terrible. Well, at least you should try your best to be a suitable wife. I will continue to test you from now on. And don't you ever buy fancy clothes again. Did I make myself clear? Oh my god, hurry up and answer the phone. Hey, I'm telling you to answer the phone. Bruna, what's going on? My son collapsed. You need to come to the hospital right now. Huh? My husband is sitting beside me. Sitting beside you? Yes. Today is a weekday, right? It can't be true. Why is my son sitting next to you? Are both of you skipping work? No, I'm at the hospital. What do you mean? I was surprised you knew that we are in the hospital. Who told you about this? Are you in the hospital? Yes, that's right. Is he in the hospital now? Tell me the truth. Is my son in the hospital now? You told me yourself that Walter is in the hospital, didn't you? That's why you wanted me to hurry up and answer the phone, right? What are you talking about? I was just telling a lie to test you. For heaven's sake, I can't believe my son is in the hospital. I'm on my way over there right now. Is my son okay? Yes, my husband is fine. Please rest assured. He's hospitalized, so there's no way that he's fine. I'm on my way. Do you know which hospital we are at? Of course I do. Hey, Catherine. I went to the hospital, but my son is nowhere to be found. Don't tell me that you lied to me about my son being hospitalized. No, it was me who was hospitalized, not my husband. No one said that my husband was in the hospital. Huh? I never said anything about my husband being hospitalized, did I? What? Stop talking nonsense! Okay then. I asked the staff at the reception and they said that neither you or my son is hospitalized. How do you explain that? You both are married, so you must have the same family name. Because it's a different hospital than the usual one. It's no wonder we're not there. What? You went to a different hospital? I had no choice, because the hospital we often visit can't conduct the necessary examination. Why not? Just explain to me clearly. There are a lot of our neighbors coming to the hospital at this hour. I thought my son was hospitalized, so I got panicked and they saw me in that state. It's your fault. Oh, sorry for that. The neighbor said that I'm finally losing my mind. That's hilarious. You must have made a lot of noise at the reception to be told that much. Isn't it a little embarrassing? It can't be helped. Anyone would make a fuss if they were told that their son was in the hospital, right? That's because you lied to me in the first place. So, where is the hospital you're at? It's the Obstetrics and Gynecology Clinic. What? Oh, could it be? Yes, just as you thought. I'm pregnant. I'm finally going to be a mother. 
but I couldn't cope with my morning sickness and collapsed. I had to be hospitalized temporarily. I'm on a drip now. That's great news! I'm going to be a grandmother! Did you find out whether it's a boy or a girl? We don't know yet. I'm still at the early stage of pregnancy, so it's difficult to find out. I'll never accept anything but a boy. Since you've joined our family, you must give birth to a boy at all costs. The boy will be our heir. Don't worry about that. I'm not going to let you see the baby, so gender doesn't matter at all. What? What do you mean you're not going to let me see my grandchild? I have the right to see my own grandchild. No matter what the gender of the child is, me and my husband will raise the child with love and care. I have no intention of letting you see your grandchild. Also, I don't want to see your face anymore. Why not? Don't you understand? If you try to think about what you have done to me until now, you'll understand, don't you? You have done a lot of terrible things to me. That's not right. I have made so much effort for your own sake. I've been educating you to be a good wife for my son. Educating me? You gotta be kidding me. Seeing you around makes me so stressed out. I get headaches, I feel sick and so on. My husband said that I don't have to see you again. Your son agreed with me. No way. My son would never say such a thing. I won't forgive you if you keep saying random things. Stop lying. I'm not lying. If you don't believe me, please check with Walter. Oh, no. Please, Catherine. You know how much I wanted a grandchild, don't you? I was looking forward to the birth of my grandchild. Yes, you've told me that multiple times. I know exactly what you mean. That's why I don't want you to see my child. You are trying to force your own ideas on your grandchildren, right? You want to treat the child as if he or she is some sort of property, don't you? Give me a break. I want my children to grow up in a carefree environment. I don't want you to meddle in my child care. I will respect any of your opinion. I'll even pay for school fees and stuff. I don't have any money problems. This isn't about money problem. It's a problem between me and you having different values. A problem between us? That's right. You've been bullying me a lot until now. I don't want you to change your attitude towards me just because I'm going to give birth to your grandchild. That can't be helped. Besides, if you want me to care for you, I will do so. That's fine, right? So please, let me see my grandchild. I can't. Even today, you even lied to me that my husband collapsed. I can't trust you anymore. That was a joke. It was just for fun. I can't believe you don't know what I was talking about. A joke? Oh, come on. You were just going to enjoy seeing me in panic, weren't you? That's too much, no matter how you think about it. I can't be family with someone who dares to joke like that. It wasn't funny at all. Hey, wait a minute. I'll support you during the delivery, and I won't interfere in childcare. From now on, I will never bully you again. So let me see my grandson, okay? It's my precious grandchild. The child is more important to me than life itself, so I can't allow a dangerous person being around. You wouldn't want your grandchild to get involved with dangerous person, would you? That's how I feel right now. I insulated myself from my mother-in-law and was able to give birth safely. My husband is a man who listens to me and stands by me. I'm so grateful for that. And now, only my husband goes home to his parents once in a while. Every time he does that, his mother gives him a lot of expensive sweets, clothes, and so on. Seems that Bruna wants to see her grandchildren a lot. I guess she was not lying about her feelings. Well, I haven't replied to Bruna at all since I had my child. But she has been contacting me every day to apologize. It's getting more and more depressing. 
but it looks like Bruna is feeling very sorry for what she has done. Before she dies, I'd like to show her the face of her grandchild just once. I don't know how many years I need to finally decide that though. My name is Shelly. I'm 22 years old and a private university student majoring in astronomy. I have my parents and my younger sister, Kayla, who is cute and smart since she was little and has always been at the top of her class in school and in everything. Compared to my sister, I am ordinary in terms of talent and appearance, and my parents discriminate against me, and my sister looks down on me. One day, when my sister went to Germany to study abroad, the problems that had been accumulating finally exploded. I'm in the middle of a lecture right now. Can I talk to you later? It's not a big deal, is it? I don't care. Just answer the phone, Shelly. And I don't care about your schedule. I told you to always answer my phone, didn't I? How many times have I told you? Ah, oh, there's no way I can do that. What a pain in the ass. So, what do you want? Like I said before, I'm in the middle of a lecture, so hurry up. Hey, did you hear about it? About what? Big news! Kayla got her PhD from a German university. Oh, right. She went to Germany to study from last year, right? That's great. Right. I was worried about her at first. Compared to you, Kayla is cute and brilliant, but to go abroad for two years? I really didn't feel like I'm breathing until now. But if she got PhD, that's a different story. Not that it's any of my business, but if you were so worried about her, you shouldn't have let her go abroad. You know, Kayla is a freshman. She's not a child anymore, and overseas is not as dangerous as you think. You. I've told you many times that Kayla can study better than you, and she's as pretty as a model or an actress. Anything could happen to her. She must be popular, unlike you. I'm sure she'd be in trouble if someone strange likes her. You, on the other hand, are just a plain girl with nothing special to offer but looking at the stars and the moon in your spare time. And even though you go to a university, you haven't shown any success. It's like chalk and cheese. Don't make me laugh. You're talking like that again, Mom. That's enough. I don't want to hear it. I've told you many times. I'm your daughter too. Why are you so mean to me? Well... Unfortunately, we're related by blood. I can't believe it too, even though I'm your parent. I mean, it would have been fine with having only one daughter if you were as good-looking and studious as Kayla. But you weren't, so I had no choice but to give birth to Kayla and pin my hope. What a waste of time, effort, and money. I don't know where I went wrong. A waste of time? What do children mean to you? I'm looking forward to Kayla's future. I bet she'll do even better if she got her PhD from a German university. You're her big sister, so you should support her as much as you can. Don't ever drag her down. Don't worry, I won't get involved. Shelly! Kayla's coming back at the end of this month. I can't wait. Now that she'll be back, she's going to use her qualifications and experience she gained overseas, including her PhD. Your room should be hers. I want her to relax and enjoy herself. What? What do you mean by that, Mom? I mean exactly what it says. I'm asking you what it means. Answer me. I live in a dorm room, but that room belongs to me, right? She has her own room. I still have a lot of my important things there. But you know, she can't use her room now. Only your room is available. You know, it's your fault. It's because you're addicted to fortune-telling and spirituality and bought all kinds of shady power stones or holy water from shady places like a fool. What do you mean like a fool? Those things are very sacred and important. I couldn't help it. No matter how literally brilliant she is, I was worried about that girl. You know I'm her mother. Besides, I was told that if I buy them, my daughter will be able to study abroad in peace and enjoy and be successful. And that's what happened. 
you shouldn't have taken that sketchy person's word for it and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy all those things and use the room as a storage. Besides, now that Kayla will be back and has met your expectations, you don't need them anymore. So if you get rid of all that stinky stuff, she can have her own room. And there shouldn't be any complaints or problems, right? No, you can't do that. She's going to spend the rest of her university life here, and in three years, she'll be working, remember? Her role is not over yet. If I throw them away, she might lose credits at university, waste her qualifications and knowledge, and most importantly, she might get into a bad company. And most importantly, she might end up working for a bad company. If that happens, can you take the responsibility? What is that? Overprotection has gone too far. Don't you realize that you're being tricked and wasting your money? I don't think Kayla, who brags so much about herself and has ability, would drop her credits and qualifications so easily. Because she's brilliant, right? If she fails her credits, it's her responsibility. And if she's going to work for a bad company, she should quit immediately and change her job, right? No, I don't want her to have such a hard time. Failure is not acceptable. Huh? Wait a minute. Then what about me? I was going to keep my mouth shut, but what about me? What the hell am I supposed to do? You don't care about me. I don't care about you, LOL. Do whatever you want. I have Kayla. Still, it's a student dorm. You're living alone. You're a big sister, so don't be such a baby. Kayla, Kayla, Kayla. As if I'm a stranger. This is ridiculous. Don't you have any compassion as a mother? Do you only care about her that much? I don't have any tears for you. I don't expect anything from you. Kayla will do her best in Germany and bring back useful qualifications and knowledge so that me and her father will be safe in the future. That's why I'm going to get rid of everything in your room. LOL. Kayla's going to use it from now on. LOL, I'm busy, so bye. Wait, wait. Anyway, I'm going home now. Until then, don't touch my room. I told you, I have something important. Hey, what's this all about? How dare you? Did you completely ignore what I said? I told you not to touch my room until I come back. I didn't ignore you. I had no choice. Kayla was living abroad for two years where she's unfamiliar and now she's tired. There's also the time difference. And I wanted her to take a rest soon. She's my precious daughter. But does that mean you're really going to make my room her room? This is crazy. I told you. Kayla's room is filled with my precious lucky items. So the only room left is yours. You're a big sister and you're asking a lot. You're so brazen. You don't even live here now. I don't want to hear any more of that nonsense. What's wrong with you? You threw my novels clothes and all my stuff off the balcony didn't you and it had been raining like crazy that morning and the yard was muddy it made everything soggy and unusable why don't you just buy another novel or clothes besides useless it just got wet and soggy right you can dry the books and wash the clothes you know mom it's not just for me but do you know that you're causing a lot of trouble to the people living downstairs as well you know we live on the fourth floor, right? I apologize to them for you. I know. I don't feel sorry for you. I don't even know the strangers living downstairs. They won't even know it came from my place. LOL. You're insane. I had no idea you have no common sense and unaware of parental duties. Oh well, if you hate me that much, you don't have to come home anymore. I'll feel better if you don't come back. Huh? You're not my child. You've been nagging me from the beginning. If you don't like what I say, then fine. Go live on your own. Are you serious? You're not just crazy. You're insane. Even if I have your blood in me, you don't give a shit about me? You're persistent. I told you from the beginning that you're not my child, right? LOL. You say that far? You're so hopeless. I really didn't think you'd be this harsh. Whatever. You told me I'm crazy or insane. You are hopeless. Well, that's enough. If you insist, I'll break off the relationship between you and me. Wait a minute. Who 
are you talking to? I didn't raise you that way. Who I am talking to? Are you acting like a parent now? Don't make me laugh. What's wrong with me mentioning it? I can't think of you as my parent. You are a stranger. And to be honest, I can't deal with you, let alone Kayla. And I was thinking of leaving by the time she gets back from Germany. You really are a cocky little girl. If you want to break off the relationship, then fine. I've always thought that you're not my daughter in the first place. As of today, I'm done with you. Now get your belongings and get out. And don't come back. I don't need you to tell me. I don't want this house. I'm sick of it. I hope you have no regrets. Well, goodbye. Shelly, it's been a while. How are you? I was worried about you. I was wondering how you're doing. Who are you? Excuse me? I'm your mother. Did you forget? Mother? Hmm? Who are you talking about? And what are you talking about? I don't even have a family anymore, let alone a mother. I don't have time to talk about the old days with a stranger, so if you'll excuse me. What do you mean a stranger? It's only been two years since you ran away from home and you've forgotten your mother. Ugh, how can you be so brazen? You messed your own daughter's room, covered all my things in rain and mud and made them unusable. And then you said unbelievable things like you are not my child or I wasted a lot of time and effort on you. I don't think you can call yourself a mother after all of that. But what are you here to tell me now? Mothers say things like that to their children when they get frustrated. You know what I mean. I was just taking it out on you. I mean, it's your fault for making me frustrated in the first place. Talking to you just makes me more irritable. You know we call this crap? And this is a very stupid one. So what do you want? I thought you're getting frustrated talking to me again. I mean, we both will. Don't tell me you want me to come back home. Don't worry. That's not what I want to tell you. This is very embarrassing to say, but I want you to send us money. Huh? Sending money? Are you kidding me? Why? Actually, Kayla got a job at LL Company after she graduated from university, using the qualifications and knowledge she gained in Germany. But two months ago, she suddenly quit. What? LL Company is... I believe it's a major German manufacturer that's well-known in the U.S., right? Let me ask you why she quit. It seems like she didn't get along with her boss. He scolded her in front of everyone. What? Is that the only reason? Kayla didn't have enough money to go shopping, so she borrowed some money from the cash box. Well, that's absolutely a wrong action. Borrowing a little money? That's embezzlement or a thief. An employee must do it. She would get caught. But if she only got scolded, she was lucky. Thanks to those good luck items, LOL. But he didn't have to scold her in front of everyone as a warning. Poor thing. She was so embarrassed and angry that she slapped her boss and it made it hard for her to stay there. Her hand must have hurt too. Poor Kayla. That's 100% or even 300% her fault. She deserves it. Embezzling money and then slapping your boss? That's hopeless. So let me ask you something. She didn't quit. She was fired, right? No. I told them on the phone that Kayla is quitting. Even in a big company, there are things you can do and things you shouldn't do. I can't have Kayla work with a boss who would hurt her. Even though she's heartbroken, she is looking for a next job. But she can't seem to find a job because no company has a good eye for her. Kayla says, I'm tired. I'm hurt. I'm going to rest. And she stopped looking for a job and stays in her room most of the time. What? You called the company? That's insane. So she has no job now? She embezzled money and now she's a shut-in? LOL. Hey, don't say like that. You still feel inferiority? She's just hurt because she got yelled at by an adult for the first time. She's a sensitive girl. Anyway, she's just resting and will be back in the world soon. Unlike you, she's a perfect girl. After all, Kayla is so brilliant and different compared to others that she got her PhD in Germany. Thanks for the parental advice, which I'm sick of after two years. Well, 
I understand most of the situation, but why do I have to send you money? I'm already done with you guys, remember? You even told me not to come back too. In the first place, you were able to live by buying so many lucky items and spending so much money that you turned Kayla's former room into a storeroom, right? You didn't need my money to live until now, so you don't need me to send it to you. Are you up to something? It's not that. It's just your father fell ill. Huh? Last week, I woke up one morning and he was lying next to the bed. He's still in the hospital because of the stroke, in addition to his deteriorating health due to overwork and stress. Because of the stroke, he will no longer be able to move the left side of his body, so I'm afraid he won't be able to continue working. What is that? That's a terrible situation. Even though I haven't seen him, that's still worrisome. You could have told me about that even if we are in this relationship. Our relationship is one of the reasons, but also because I didn't think it was worth mentioning to you. Besides, I didn't want you to come back. Anyway, things have changed. He can't work anymore. He seems to be able to get a pension, and I'm reluctantly working part-time jobs, but we're a little short on living expenses. If things continue like this, I can't even buy Kayla clothes and other things like I used to. She will have a hard time. It will be fine until Kayla gets a job and our life becomes stable, so please send us some money. Even if you are incompetent, you can at least help your pretty sister, right? Please return the favor I've done for you until now. I'm disappointed if that's all you can say. You're such a jerk. What? After I left, I didn't block you, hoping that you guys would say sorry for the last chance, since you were my family. But after all... There was not a single word of apology and Kayla kept texting me of abuse, checking me that I'm still alive and making fun of me as if she was spending her spare time. And today, your stupid request made me realize that my hope was useless. So, whatever. Shelly, I'm blocking your number as of today and I'm changing my number. I'll never send money home, I'll never go back to your house like before, and I've realized that I never want to talk to you again. So think like I don't exist, it's better for both of us. What did you say? You think I'm going to let you do that? What are parents to you? I had a hard time giving birth to you, but you couldn't get a job at a decent school or company. At least send money back to your parents and be a good daughter. Don't make us upset. There you go. See, you won't change. Do you know that I have a heart too? Just because I didn't follow you, you treated me like I was incompetent and even abandoned me, saying I wasn't your child. But I worked, earned my own money, moved into a university dorm, and became an independent person. And I'm still working and studying in university to become an astronomer. I'm staying grounded for the life. I'm not being taken care of you. On the other hand, How's Kayla? She's a gifted person who is proud of being able to do anything. And on top of that, you guys took great care of her. How did she end up? Unlike Kayla who became unemployed because she underestimated the world itself, let alone society, I'm different. So why should I have to help her when she treated me like that and made me break off relationship with you guys? Since that day two years ago, I have no obligation to clean up Kayla's mess. Let alone be your slave, you know. Don't you think it's too selfish of you to ask me for help now after you made fun of me so much and agreed to cut me off? You're so cocky. Is that how you talk to your parents? Anyway, there's still a chance for Kayla who got her PhD. She's just in a bit of a slump right now. When she gets a new job, I'll leave you alone this time, so just shut up and send us money. PhD, hey... Do you think it's really true? Well, she is certainly a brilliant girl, so there's a chance she could get it on her own, but... Huh? What do you mean? What? That's Kayla making out with a German student in this picture, right? Look closely. You're a pretty girl. Actually, when Kayla was studying abroad, a friend of mine who went to the same university as me went to Germany for fun. She saw this scene on her way back from a dinner with her friends and took a picture of it and sent it to me. Wait a minute. 
Then a friend told me this interesting story that Kayla was dating some guys and having sex with them and got answers of essays and exams as a reward. That's how she got the credits and passed grades she needed for her PhD so easily. You can come up with that naughty things if you're gorgeous and smart, huh? Easily? That's ridiculous. Kayla wouldn't do that. Don't be surprised yet. Here, this. Hey! This was sent to me by another friend of mine who works part-time at a club. And he said that every day, Kayla was playing with a bunch of guys like this. She even gave allowance to her favorite one every day. I wonder where the money came from. No way! Kayla is not... These are all fake! She's so easy. She used the money from LL Company to give it to them, perhaps? It's impossible for her to play with so many guys at the club every day and give them pocket money. I'm sure she's probably in debt as well. And also, she should have used your money and those bogus items in that storeroom, right? What? Oh God, all of them in that room are gone! And she even took more than half of the money from our accounts! Oh, I knew it. Now you see? And let me tell you once again, I won't send you any money and I don't want anything from you guys when you say you'll buy me what I want. So, think this as a divine punishment for kicking me out and raising Kayla to be such a super selfish piece of shit. You just have to give up and go broke or work yourself to death. I'm going to completely cut myself off from you this time, so I'll leave everything to you guys. Wait a minute! Don't abandon us! I'm sorry for what I've done! Let's be a family again, and I'll make Kayla and your father apologize. And when our lives settle down, I'll pay you back double what I owe. I promise! So please, forgive us and help us, Shelly! It's too late. Well, you know, what goes around comes around. You deserve it. Well then, good luck with your pretty girl. Goodbye, ex-mom. As I declared, I blocked my ex-mom, ex-dad, and ex-sister's numbers, and the next day, I changed my number on my phone. After this, I heard from a friend who lives near my parents' house that my ex-mom asked Kayla whether it was a fact or not, and she said, Oh, you knew? So what? It's not a big deal. I'm special, right? She wasn't sorry at all, so they got into a big fight, which contained a cursed words and throwing things. Ex-mom's anger ended up in vain and Kayla did not look for a job at all, saying, I am not a person who is pushed by others. She never used her knowledge, qualifications, or PhD, which she earned by cheating. She shut herself and stayed unemployed. She spent money on clubs and gambles, stole mom's salary and dad's pension, and has accumulated even more debt. Furthermore, my ex-dad has dementia, due to the stress of being hospitalized and not being able to move his left side of his body freely, and has started to hit my ex-mom, who was taking care of him. She was exhausted by working part-time that she was not used to, taking care of ex-dad and dealing with Kayla, who was not working, asking mom for money and having a debt. And finally, she was hospitalized in a mental hospital. The house was sold to help Kayla pay off her debts, and then, she was chased by some scary guys and is now nowhere to be found. So, my ex-family, who loved my brilliant sister and excluded me from the family, has ended up in a big collapse. It hurts my heart a little, but I will not look back. I've learned a lot from this family. I will live my life humbly as a compassionate person while devoting myself to my dream of becoming an astronomer. Sorry. I'm completely late. I just got off the night shift, so I'm going home. Were you really at work? You've been working a lot of night shifts lately, haven't you? Aurora, are you having an affair or something? What? Don't say silly things. I'm really busy at work right now. I don't have time for an affair. Hey, Lucio, if you don't mind, I need a little help from you. I don't want to help a woman who's cheating behind her husband's back. Stop kidding me. I'm not having an affair. You know how we've been struggling with our business, don't you? There's no way I could have an affair since I'm so busy. I need to help the employees with their works. 
Anyway, I need your help too. We don't have enough people here. Just helping a little bit will be fine. Why should I help you? I don't want to do that. Are you telling me that you don't mind if our business fails? Your company will be in trouble too. I don't need you to tell me what to do. My company is doing just fine. No need to worry about that. Just give me an extra allowance, okay? No kidding. I just gave it to you the other day. Don't tell me that you've already spent it all. What on earth did you spend it on? It's none of your business. Why don't you just shut up and give me the money? I didn't know you were such a nag. I don't even want to talk to you anymore. Let's get a divorce. What? What are you talking about all of a sudden? Divorce is not a word you can say in jest. That's enough. I'm not joking. I'm serious too. Just in time. Actually, I've been thinking about it ever since I was convinced you were cheating on me. Good thing I got the divorce papers ready. I'm well prepared, aren't I? I can't believe you just said that to me. Don't just go ahead and do whatever you want without even listening to what I have to say. It's an important thing for both of us. When are you going to talk to me when you're working night shifts all the time? I don't have time for that. We could have talked if you stayed home from work on your day off. You weren't home either. Why should I have to adjust to your rhythm of life? You're a cheater. How dare you say that? All I did was to take my job seriously. I didn't expect you to not have any intention to listen to what I have to say. All right, then. I'll sign the divorce papers when I get home. Just leave them on the table. Got it. Hi, Aurora. Lucio, is that you? Long time no see. You must have felt a lot of remorse after I dumped you five years ago. I'll make a special effort to get back together with you. So bring me the marriage certificate right now. What's with you all of a sudden? I don't understand. I'm saying that we should get back together again. You have no right to refuse my offer. Let me ask my husband first. What? I got remarried. I don't want to hide things from my husband, so I'll talk to him. Don't lie to me. No man would marry a woman like you. I know that you've been so lonely since I left you, so you're living in a fantasy. I feel sorry for you. I'm partly responsible for that. Don't talk to me like that. I'm not delusional or anything. I got remarried to a guy who's on the management team at the same place I work. From your hotel? I think I've met him before. His name is Edward, right? I got his business card when we had a meeting in the past. Then you know that he's real, don't you? Will you leave me alone now? Your hotel is on the verge of bankruptcy, isn't it? The last time I saw it, it was in such shambles I couldn't help but laugh. That's terrible, isn't it? If he's an employee of such a hotel... He doesn't seem to be much of a man either. Don't make fun of the hotel and Edward. I won't forgive you. But it's true, isn't it? Dump that aimless man and remarry me while I'm still in a good mood. You'll be happier with me. Just call me when you're ready. Sorry to bother you at work, Edward. There's something I really need to talk to you about. Is now a good time? I'm free right now. What's wrong? Actually, I just got a call from my ex-husband. Is that the guy who dumped you because he suspected you were cheating on him when the hotel was in a difficult situation? Why did he call you? He told me to leave you and remarry him. It's a complete nonsense. Huh? That's the funniest joke I've heard lately. You don't have to take such a ridiculous request seriously. Yes, of course. Besides, I don't want to get involved with Lucio anymore. Glad to hear that. I'm worried about you. 
It was just too ridiculous. I actually wondered if I should report it to you or not. I still don't know what Lucia's true intention is, and I don't want to keep it from you, so I thought I'd just tell you. I'm sorry. I know you are busy with your job, and I'm just making you worry about me with this silly matter. Don't be sorry. I'm always willing to listen to what you have to say, so feel free to share anything you want to share with me. I'm just trying to help you. We are a married couple, right? If you have any problems, not just this one, you can talk to me right away. You don't need to hesitate. That's so kind of you, Edward. I don't know what I would have done to run the hotel without your help. I really appreciate your support from the bottom of my heart. It's okay. I'm doing this because I want to. I'd be happier if you didn't hold back. Yeah, thank you. I should probably get some rest so I can get ready for work tomorrow. Please, do that. Good night. Have you decided to leave your husband? I told you I'm not leaving him. Why should I leave him? You'd better get your act together. You're too slow, you know that? Three years ago, you pushed me away without even listening to me. What do you want from me now? You took the liberty of doubting me when I had just taken over the hotel from my parents who had passed away in an accident and was busy studying management and working regular shifts. Now and then, you belittle me. Stop making fun of me, Lucio. Don't you dare sending me a message ever again. It's your fault for cheating on me in the past. I told you I didn't cheat on you. You're so persistent. I've had enough. Just listen to me. I'm not mad that you cheated on me. I'm so sweet to let bygones be bygones. Don't you think so? Well, if you had given me more allowance back then, I might have turned a blind eye to the fact that you cheated on me. If we got back together, give me more allowance than you did back then. Looks like you haven't changed in your spending habits at all. Are you planning to use me as your ATM? Isn't it obvious? You know exactly what I mean. I understood. I need to get ready too, so wait a minute. You've finally made up your mind. I'll be waiting to hear from you. Hey, Aurora, are you divorced yet? What on earth are you talking about? It's been less than a day since the last time we talked. You know what people say? The sooner the better. I mean, just get a divorce right away. How long are you gonna make me wait? Divorce papers should be accepted as soon as you file them. You did that five years ago, so you know that, don't you? Shut up. Just wait until I call you. What's with that tone of yours? You're too slow. Don't forget that I'm waiting for you. Why are you so obsessed with me? We're strangers now. What? Are you curious about that? Well, of course. You're being so persistent. If I tell you how I really feel, you'll never remarry me. I'll be ready no matter what you tell me. You can tell me the truth. Oh, really? Then I'll tell you the truth. It's not you that I want. It's your hotel. So let's just get remarried. What do you mean? Sell that shabby hotel and make a little extra money. It's the best you can do for me. You understand that? You've put me through so much trouble. This is the least you can do. I've worked so hard to rebuild this hotel that my parents have left for me. You know about that, don't you? How can you say that so easily? Silence. You know what I'm talking about. Just divorce Edward right away. I'll mail you the marriage certificate and divorce papers today. Why are you rushing me? I don't think there's anything to be in a hurry about. It's none of your business. Anyway, I can't wait any longer. Just hurry up. It's really about the money, isn't it? 
I can't think of anything else. What are you talking about? I don't know anything about money-related thing. I heard you're in debt, and you're struggling to pay it. Did you do some investigation on me? I can't believe you did that. I talked to a mutual friend of ours, and he told me everything. I also heard about some rumors related to you. Since we were divorced, you've been spending money like crazy, and you've created debts from several loan companies. You were wandering around proudly while saying that you're looking for someone who could pay off your debts. That's why you contacted me. What a ridiculous story. What does it matter? It has nothing to do with this. So, if I'm saying that I won't pay any of your debts, will you still remarry me? What? A married couple should support each other. Are you saying that you're going to abandon me after we get remarried? A spouse is not obligated to pay for your debt. Why didn't you do some research about that in advance? I know that you never intended to remarry me from the start. You deceived me. This is a scam. Don't get me wrong. If you look at our talk history, you'll see that I never said I was getting a divorce. I just said I was getting ready. You mentioned something about being prepared. You mean you were preparing to remarry, but you were preparing to conduct some investigation about me? Well, I guess that's what I meant. Tomorrow is the day I need to pay my debt, and I'm short on money. Do something about it, please, Aurora. You really are a self-centered guy who only thinks about yourself. I can't help you. Five years ago, I was so confused and shocked. It's a good thing that we decided to get a divorce. I can't believe that you took the liberty of looking into my private life. I don't need such a terrible woman like you anymore. Fine then. Hi. I'm Aurora's ex-husband, Lucio. You're Edward, right? Huh? Where did you get this contact information? You gave me your business card when we met before. I found your account from the cell phone number written on it. I see. I don't remember when we met, but did I give you my business card? That's not important. Listen to me. I'm in a lot of financial trouble, and Aurora won't help me. She's heartless. You have to say something to her. Tell her to help her ex-husband. Are you out of your mind? My wife has told me many things about you. This time too, you brought this on yourself, didn't you? I heard that you created that debt on your own after the divorce. Why should Aurora help you? What a light-mouthed woman. I can't believe she told you that. Stop insulting my wife. Aurora is a kind and very honest woman. That doesn't matter now. If she can't, then you, who are now in a family relationship with her, must pay my debt. You must help me because we got married to the same woman. You really are insane. If you insist, I can hire you as a janitor in our hotel for your side job. You could use your paycheck to pay us back. If you discuss it with me, I'll consider paying you in advance. You want me to work even harder? That's enough. You're just an owner of that trashy hotel which is on the verge of going under. But you act all high and mighty. You are useless. So is Aurora. Why don't both of you just shut up and obey me? I've heard a lot about you from my wife. You're just a selfish and narrow-minded guy. What did you say? You talk so big. By the way you talk, you probably know nothing about the current state of our hotel. Don't make fun of me. I know more about that shabby hotel than you do. Shabby hotel, huh? Are you talking about the old hotel? When was the last time you saw the hotel? What do you mean? Don't keep saying things that don't make sense. We built the new wing a few months ago, 
and we've already started the business there. Thankfully, our guests have been using it without interruption, so your information about our hotel seems to be out of date. That can't be true. I've been making fun of the fact that it's like a shabby hotel for years. You mean, the hotel management is doing well now? Since I joined the management team at my wife's request, we have made many improvements. We have attracted foreign tourists, collaborated with surrounding commercial facilities, and are now getting a lot of media coverage. We're also gaining popularity among young female visitors too. Let me ask you just because I'm curious. Does a janitor who work at your hotel earn a good salary? If so, I'll give it some thought. If you are recognized for your work ethic and skills, even as a part-time worker, if you have a good track record, you can get a raise. Hopefully, you could be the manager of the cleaning department. That's not your concern anymore since you've turned down the offer. I didn't know the hotel was in good shape. I thought it was still a shabby hotel. But when it comes to a well-managed hotel, it's a different story. You can hire me as a cleaner or whatever. You need to pay me a good salary, of course. Jeez, I can't believe that you change your mind so quickly like that. It's amazing. Isn't it? Hire me then. I'm afraid I can't do that. I gave you a chance once, but you wasted it. Shame on you. You're such a cruel man. You'd better prepare your resignation letter, Edward. You again? My wife told me you're really persistent and looks like she's right. I've emailed my company to terminate your contract. I hope you go to hell with that stupid woman together. Stupid woman? From my point of view, you are the stupid one. She was tired of being accused of something she didn't deserve in the past. How dare you, who had suspected her of an unjustifiable crime, say something like that? When I think of her back then, I still feel pain in my heart. Her suffering is all your fault. You must apologize properly to Aurora. What are you blabbering about? She worked night shifts all the time. It's normal to suspect an affair, right? She didn't come back to me anyway. Normally, the first thing you do in that kind of situation is to support her. You saw her working so hard to keep the hotel her parents left her from going bankrupt. And you really thought she was cheating on you? Is that what a husband would do to his wife? If she was in real trouble, she would have relied on me. She was asking for your support. Didn't she tell you to help her? You were the one who ignored her and then accused her for a crime she didn't even commit. That attitude of yours hurt her so badly. Do you know why she still can't rely on others? She trusted you, but because you pushed her away at that time, she's still afraid to rely on anyone even now. Don't you feel sorry for her? Why are you desperately defending her? She cheated on me, remember? Aurora's parents were my benefactors. I couldn't get a job, so they picked me up and trained me to become a good hotel worker. So Aurora is not only the person to whom I pledged my life, but also the daughter of my benefactors. Of course, I'm going to take good care of her. I told you about the janitorial service because I was willing to give you a chance, just like Aurora's parents did for me, but you wasted it. You're such an annoying man. Stop blabbering nonsense. I think I'm just wasting my time by having a conversation with you. I have work to do, so if you'll excuse me. You won't be able to act like a big shot anymore soon. I bet you'll be in a panic when your contract is cancelled. Why am I being fired? That's crazy. I knew it. You deserve that anyway. You knew about this? Explain to me. You don't know anything about your own company, do you? We request linen and other equipment from your company. 
but because of your outburst this time, Edward requested to cancel the contract with your company. In other words, your company lost most of its sales because of what you've done. Your company was the one who suffered from the termination of the contract. You were the one who started the whole thing. You should be fired to take responsibility for that. That's not fair. How dare you? You did the same thing, didn't you? I think it's not the right time to discuss about that. Instead, why don't you worry about your future? When I signed the contract with the new cleaning company, they said that your company has a bad reputation in the industry. Seriously? You were the one who spread the rumor, right? Huh? Don't be ridiculous. I'm not going to spend my energy on that. Do something about it. I can't live like this. You should sign a contract with my company. Then maybe the company will hire me again. You're the only one I can rely on. Like I said before, I've already signed a contract with the next contractor, so I can't help you. Why won't you help me? We were married once, remember? Don't you care about me? Five years ago, when I tried to talk to you about running the business, you cut me off saying it was none of your business. Have you forgotten about that? How can you think that the person you didn't reach out to would help you? I can't even forgive you for your outburst against the hotel that I inherited from my parents. Stay away from me and Edward from now on. I'll even ask a lawyer to write a written oath for you later. No way. What am I supposed to do about the debt then? How would I know? Why don't you just go on your way and get lost on the street with no food to eat? Don't say that. Seems that you don't remember what you said to me in the past. You must go through my lawyer if you want to talk to me from now on. Goodbye. I'm sorry for everything I've done, Edward. Even after I married you, I didn't want to show my weakness because I was so traumatized that my ex-husband left me. So I threw myself into my work for a long time, but it made me feel guilty again. I couldn't honestly rely on you. I'm sincerely sorry. There's nothing to apologize for. I knew how you felt. That's why I waited for you. I believed that you could go through it. Thank you. I believe in you even more. You're not alone, Aurora. I'm sure your parents would be happier if you honestly relied on me. Let's continue to do our best together. Yeah, sure. I won't just look into the past. I'll do my best to find happiness in the future too. The nightmarish upheaval caused by my ex-husband came to an end. After that, I heard that Lucio started job hunting to pay off the debt he had incurred by himself. However, his job interview did not go well because he kept bad-mouthing his previous job. I can only say that he got what he deserved. In the end, he ended up working day and night, doing both day and night shifts, which he had been avoiding for so long. I wonder how he feels now, working the night shift for the cause he once suspected me of cheating on him. I hope he will learn from his mistake. My husband and I have worked very hard to further develop the hotel and have succeeded in growing it to the point where it is now a recommended hotel for tourists visiting Florida. We have also increased the number of employees and trained the new joiners. By doing that, we now can spend more time together as a married couple. What a coincidence! I never thought I would bump into you. Let's have tea and chat next time. Isabella, are you serious? I didn't want to see you. I don't even want to talk to you. So I'm not going to have tea or anything with you. What? Why? Why? Think about it. Have you forgotten what you did? Hey! Are you still holding on to the past? It was three years ago. You should forget it by this time. 
It's not like I'm holding on to it. I just don't want to get involved with people who have no common sense. If you're not holding on to it, why don't you just have a cup of tea with a colleague you haven't seen in a while? You're as uptight as ever, LOL! If you're like that, you won't even find someone to remarry. It's none of your business. If you don't have anything important, may I go now? Wait! I do have something. Don't you want to know about your ex-husband's current status? I have no interest in my ex-husband. He's a stranger to me now. Hey! You're curious, aren't you? Your ex-husband is now... A section manager! What do you think? Aren't you jealous? Oh, even that insane person can be promoted. When he was with you, he was only a section chief, LOL. As soon as he married me, he got a promotion. Oh, I guess having a beautiful wife by his side motivates man to work hard. My salary went up and we bought a small detached house. Good for you. You seem to be living a very happy life. Yes, my husband seems happy too. When he was with you, you guys were renting an apartment, right? LOL. A shabby apartment suits you. But a house is the best house for a proper couple. Detached house is nice. It's like my castle. Nice. Are you jealous? Do you feel like you made a mistake by breaking up with him? No, not at all. Like I said before, I'm not even interested. You're a sore loser, LOL. You wish you never got divorced. Well, it's too late for that now. Poor you, LMAO. I'm not interested in a guy who cheats on his wife. When I found out about the affair with you, I lost interest in him. I see. So you're happy with your life now? I'm very happy with my life, and I'm grateful for divorcing him. Thank you for cheating on me with him. You don't have to be a sore loser. It looks miserable, LOL. Being satisfied with being divorced? Wow, LOL. Divorced people who are over 30 years old have no choice but to give up on their life. I feel sorry for you guys, LOL. I don't think my life is any of your business. If you're happy, you don't have to brag about it to me. Yes, but I also feel guilty. You divorced before you became 30. So I was worried whether you could remarry in the future. That's why I texted you today. And it seems that you are having a pitiful life just as I predicted, LOL. I feel a little sorry for you. That's none of your business. It doesn't matter to you whether I get remarried or stay single. Laura, you won't be liked by guys if you don't act cute. You'll have to stay single and become old. And at the end, you'll faint inside your room where you live alone and no one will find you and you'll just... Oh my, it's terrifying by just thinking about it. I don't want that to happen to me. Hey, it's none of your business. Just look after your own happiness. I know, but even if something happens to you, please don't call my husband. That will never happen, so don't worry. Isabella is the former junior co-worker who stole my husband three years ago. When I saw her once in a while, I lost my words by seeing her insane attitude. But I am only staying here for 10 days, and I would never have to deal with her again after that, so I decided to be patient. But three days later, as soon as I got home to the condo where I stay for a short term, I got a message from her saying something I didn't understand. Laura, please answer the phone right now. Please explain what's going on. Isabella, what is it? What's wrong? I can't answer the phone right now. Laura, 
You just went inside that famous condo in front of Jay's station? I saw it with my own eyes. This is not right. Please, explain it to me properly. I did. So what? This is one of my houses, so there's nothing strange about it. Huh? One of your houses? Don't lie to me. That condo's rent is not what you can afford. I'm not renting this place. Huh? You bought it? Of course you won't be able to afford it. Well, I didn't buy it. Don't tell me. It's your boyfriend's place. There's no way you have a boyfriend or anything. LOL. It's not my boyfriend. It's my husband's condo. Huh? Husband? Laura, you remarried? Yes, six months ago. No way! Why didn't you tell me earlier? I mean, who is this remarried guy? I can't believe he can afford that condo. Is he a billionaire? Or an oil tycoon? Or maybe he won the lottery? None of them are true, lol. My husband is the head of a company. In other words, a president. You're kidding, right? A president? And he must have a very profitable business if he can buy that condo. How can an ordinary person like you meet someone like that? Because I met him through work. I got divorced and decided to live alone. And I worked hard. My boss recognized my hard work. So he gave me this big project and then I met him. Still, how could you marry the president? His parents wouldn't allow it, would they? Marrying a divorced wife is like to make him lose face. Coincidentally, my husband's parents are also divorced and remarried. They were both betrayed by their first partners. They told me that they could trust someone who knows what it's like to be in pain. That's a lie. Now, you're just trying to look good. You better get out from there before the police come. This picture. Wait. Yes, it's a picture of our wedding. I'm living abroad right now, and I came back because I had to do something in this city. So this is the place for when I come back. So, you're saying you have another house? Abroad? That's right. I told you earlier that this is one of my houses. Why? That can't be! Why are you living such a happy life? That's not fair! What? No way! You have to survive too! Hey, Isabella, what's wrong all of a sudden? Because while I'm struggling, you're living a celebrity life overseas. I can't allow that. I don't understand why I went through all that trouble to steal him from you. Hey, what are you talking about? I will never forgive you. I'll destroy your happiness. I don't understand. Hey, Isabella. After this... There was no response from Isabella. When my husband came home from work, I showed him the conversation with her, and after he thought about it for a while, he made a phone call. A few days later, my husband told me that he had looked into her and my ex-husband's status. When I heard about their situation, I understood what she meant when she said she was struggling. I was almost done with my work in this city, and the day after tomorrow, I was planning to leave, but I received messages from her. Laura, I'm sorry for being so distraught the other day. I was a little jealous, since you seemed to be happy. I see. So, I have an announcement to make today. I thought it would be good for you, so that's why I texted you. An announcement? I have a bad feeling. Actually, a friend of mine told me she got a boyfriend with a picture. And I was so surprised when I saw the picture. A picture? This is your husband, isn't it? Your husband is cheating on you. Oh my, but still, you photoshopped so well. 
It looks very natural, even if I zoom in. What? What are you saying? I didn't Photoshop. Actually, Thomas Baker did this, right? I know everything. Why? That can't be true! Thomas is an employee of my husband's company. And you're having an affair with him, right? I did my research, so I'm sure I'm right. You looked into me? Why would you do that? Because your previous messages were obviously strange. I was cautious since I thought you were up to something. I didn't think you'd try to trick me this easily. Are you that jealous of me? I am! You work perfectly, have a happy family, you take a good care of your co-workers, and everyone likes you. I was always being scolded at work, so we're totally different. I wasn't perfect from the beginning either. I put a lot of effort. There are some people who are successful and some people who can't do it, even if they try. I was one of them. I couldn't succeed at all. I was so frustrated. That's why I wanted to see you depressed. I wanted to push you to the bottom of your life. I wanted you to experience a little of what it feels like to be at the bottom, like me. Don't tell me you cheated on my ex-husband for that. That was my intention at first. When I saw how depressed you were, I was going to leave him right away. But then I reconsidered. I could live happily like you if I stay with your husband, even if I was having a hard life. Oh. But the reality was different. I worked part-time and saved money every day in order to buy a house. When we saved up for the deposit, his parents told me that they would pay the rest and live together. So that's what happened. Once we started living together, his mother took control of all the money, and my salary was also under her control. So I can't buy what I want. My life is worse than it had been before we got married. Oh my. My husband is having an affair with one of the girls at work. Why am I the only one who has to suffer? There are people like you who are blessed. And why am I the only one who's suffering? Isn't this unfair? I can't answer. When you were with him, did he tell you that his parents were planning to live together? Well, no, he didn't. Did she complain to you about money? We were hardly in touch, so not really. Why didn't he talk to you when he was with you? And why did he mention it when he's with me? Isn't it strange? Well, don't ask me. So you got fed up and had an affair with Thomas? I met him on an app. He was kind and listened to me, so I thought I could be happy with him. Is that why you cheated? I want a place where I can be at peace. I want to be free from stress. But you chose this life, right? You stole my ex-husband from me and married him. That's because I thought I could be like you. I didn't want to work anymore either. You know, you and I are different. The same situation doesn't mean we both can be happy. It's no use taking something from someone else. If you want to be happy, you have to work on yourself. You're right. I was wrong. I know it's too late, though. Either you get divorced and start your life over, or you can keep this life. It's up to you. But I don't think you should depend on others all the time. You have to develop the strength to live on your own. Since you were able to realize it's not too late. Life goes on. You can do it. Laura, please help me. I don't want to live like this anymore. You said you've been working hard to be happy, right? Please tell me what to do. No, you have to think by yourself. I can't do anything for you. I'm already old, you know. Huh? I have to live quietly, not to bother my ex-husband. I don't think it's worth depending on a woman who's not liked by guys and don't act cute. That's not true. You're strong and cool and have femininity. You are a wonderful person. 
I respect you. Oh, that's not what you said to me a week ago. I think it was something like, I'm going to have a lonely life. That's just, I was just trying to look good. Either way, I'm not going to help you. You cheated on me with my ex-husband. I don't feel that I want to help you. To be honest, I don't feel good talking to you like this. No, please, help me. I sincerely apologize for everything I've done. Oh, by the way, Thomas quit the company. He said he should never have gotten involved with you. Is that true? Also, my ex-husband's girlfriend's fiancé has found out about the affair. I wonder what he's going to do. Oh, no! Please, please help me! I'll do anything! I want to be happy, too! I don't want to. By the way... I'm going back to my house overseas in two days, so we'll never see each other again. I'll block you too. Goodbye. Oh no! I showed this conversation to my husband, and he laughed hard. Then we went back to our home overseas together. My husband found out that the fiancé was beaten up by my ex-husband, and in addition, the company found out that he was dating his girlfriend by using the company car, so they fired him. Isabella filed for divorce, but since they were both having an affair, she is having difficulty dividing the property. She has lost a lot of weight due to her stressful days. I returned home and immediately went to the hospital because I was not feeling well and found out I was pregnant. My husband is taking care of me and I am spending a very happy life. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.